Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new video. My name is Nalo and today's video is going to actually be a bit different than our previous videos with investing content. I'm actually going to be switching over, expanding a bit into trading and also into general item content because the market is a bit stale right now and well you can basically read all about that in my YouTube community post. So to kick off this new trading content I thought it would be fitting to go ahead and start off with talking about some of the best items to trade and some of the strategies you can employ to trade the items effectively. So let's get into that. Firstly though one quick shout out to my sponsor for this video which is going to be CSGO Station. They're a Discord server that has a ton of different options for people. You can do some networking if you're a content creator. You also have trading and investing chats in there and a bunch of other stuff that's going to be super useful to you in your CSGO career, especially if you're a trader or an investor. So be sure to check them out using the link in the description below. They also feature some frequent giveaways so if you want to go ahead and get some free CSGO items be sure to use that as well. And with that let's go ahead and talk about some of the best items to trade, why you should use them to trade, and how they work. Alright guys so the first items we're going to be talking about are going to be souvenir items, especially rare souvenir items. So the reason these are going to be solid options for trading is because souvenir items actually have a ranged value. They can go for a low end or a high end. So essentially what you want to do is kind of figure out the souvenir markets to a T and then go for the low end of the souvenir items that you're going to be buying and then trade them at the high end for the maximum amount of profit. There's a lot of people that do this right now and a lot of people in the community do understand how this all works. So if you want a more kind of hands-on explanation of it, you can go ahead and figure out that from people in trading communities, but in general the way it works is just by using this margin that you create by buying something for the low end of its price and then selling it for its high end. This is a pretty fun method to trading because it allows you to explore some very unique items and it allows you to kind of trade with some pretty like-minded people that are collectors, so that's a little bit fun and again it gives you a good idea of how to search for people, especially collectors that are going to be buying your items. I'm also going to be rating all of the methods that I'm talking about by the end of me talking about them, so this is going to be the rating for souvenir trading and souvenir margin margin trading is what I kind of would call it in general. So the souvenir margin trading I'm going to go ahead and rate as a very good option in general for people that are looking for a unique thing to do. It's also going to be pretty profitable if you're able to do it correctly. The only issue with it is that the souvenir market is a little weird because items don't sell too often so it's kind of hard to pinpoint the exact price. The other issue is it's going to take some time to employ this method and make sure that you're actually trading these items because it does take a while to trade souvenir items just in general just because they are a collector's item. Generally though, the people that do employ this method of trading are very profitable and do have some pretty insane inventories, so if you want to check it out, that's definitely an option. There's a lot of great sites to use if you want to go ahead and find some souvenir items to buy on the low end. You're going to be able to snipe a lot of them on some trade bots like Traded.gg or CSGO Exo. They do feature some cool souvenir items that you'll be able to get at pretty low prices. Generally speaking, the best ones to go ahead and trade are going to be Cato 14, Cato 15, and Cologne 2014 souvenirs. Those ones tend to be pretty interesting. You also have some DreamHack 2014. 14 souvenirs, but those ones are pretty few and far between and are a little hard to get your hands on. There's also, of course, MLG 2016 All-Star Souvenirs, which you can also use, and if you want a more in-depth explanation into those, be sure to check out the video that I have on screen right now. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for the souvenir trading. Let's go ahead and move on to the next trading method that I think is a pretty good one to employ for 2020. The next trading method I urge you guys to check out is going to be snipe trading. So basically the way snipe trading works is by going onto a site such as Tradeit or CS Money or some sort of site that has a cheap item that you can get with some stickers on it or some kind of factor that makes it interesting for collectors. Basically what you want to do is just purchase these items if they're actually at good prices and at low prices because that's the point of sniping in the first place. And then what you do is take those items that you bought and trade them to somebody for a markup. There are a huge amount of ways to accomplish snipe trading. One of the first ones is of course using a sticker searcher online by searching the Steam community market for some rare stickers and then buying those and selling those at a traded markup. Another option is going on trade bots and trading in some of your items that are being traded at good margins and then buying some items from the trading bots that are going to be really good margins for collectors. Just just recently there was a huge snipe on Traded GG where you could get a USP Orion Stat Track Factory new with 4 Virtus Pro Cato 15 Hollows on it and this was a really really good item and it got sniped very very quickly. This item was going to be easily traded at a markup of around $300 to even $400. So as you can clearly tell there is a lot of profit in this method. Now this isn't just normal sniping items where you're able to snipe items and then build up your inventory value with the items that you're sniped. This is specifically focusing on taking those items and trading them to somebody that wants them like a collector of that type of item and then making profit that, that way. So this method obviously relies a lot on having good networked connections where you're able to actually access some collectors and figure out what they kind of want and then going and buying those items off the trade bots and then trading them to those collectors. 
So you are going to have to have a pretty good network set up if you want to do this trading method. Another thing you're going to have to do is make sure you're checking items frequently on sites and making sure you're looking for all those snipes on a variety of different sites because they do pop up quite frequently. You're also going to want to have a good background knowledge of stickers and how they add percentages. So if you want to go ahead and get some idea of how that works, be sure to check out the video on the screen. A nice thing about this method is that you're able to incorporate it into other trading methods that you're already using. So for example, if you're already doing souvenir trading and that's going pretty slow, you can throw this one in because it's a lot faster. So this one is going to be a lot faster than other methods, but it is going to require a lot more background knowledge and a lot more networking in the trading world. So make sure you do have that set up before you attempt this method. But if you are able to do that correctly and you are able to get all of that stuff set up, you are going to have a very efficient and fast time doing this sniping method. There are a variety of sites to check out, but I went ahead and listed a few of them right here on screen. You also don't really have to use a site. You could also just go to trading servers and look for people that are selling their items at good margins and then go ahead and bargain with them. And that's going to also give you good items at good margins that you can use for this sniping method of trading. And now finally, for the last method I want to talk about in this video, there are other trading methods, but they're going to be a little bit worse than the ones I'm listing in this video. These are just the three big ones that are going to be very profitable for you. So the third method I'm going to be talking about is just simple upgrading and downgrading. This is probably the safest method of trading, but it is going to be pretty slow. It is considerably slower than souvenir trading just because you are going to have to do a few trades just to get the profit margin that you're looking for on your initial trade, but it is going to be a really safe method and one that you can easily employ. This is probably the most common trading method and it also doesn't require a lot of background knowledge, so that's what makes it really good for a wide variety of people. So the way upgrading and downgrading works, basically you're going to want to take a big item that you have and downgrade it into a bunch of items items at a downgrade overpay. So basically you can request overpay from people if you are getting multiple items from them for your one item. So for example, if you're trading like a Karambit Fade, which is worth around $1,000 and you're downgrading that into like four different items, you can tell the person to overpay you by like 10% or 6%. Generally it's going to revolve around 6%, but sometimes you can push it up to 10% or in between somewhere there. This is going to leave you with multiple items and a profit of around 10%. So what you need to do from here is upgrade those four items back into one big item so that you can keep that 10% profit margin. What you want to do from there is take two of those items and upgrade them at no overpay. So if you have two of those items and you upgrade them into one item, you're going to end up with two items total from those four and you're going to have a pretty nice overpay margin still. And then simply take those two items that you're now left with and upgrade those into one big item that's going to be 10% higher than your original item, which was the Kramit Fade. So to reiterate, take one of your items and break it down into four or more items and make sure you're getting an overpay profit there of around six to 10%, and then take those four items and upgrade them in sets of two so that you're left with just two bigger items that are still going to be basically half the value of your original item, and then take those two items and upgrade them into one big item, retaining that 10 percent profit margin. The main reason this works is because when you're trading two items for one, there isn't really going to have to be an overpay there, but when you're trading four items for one, there is an overpay there because it is a lot of items that you're going to have to deal with, so that's kind of how this method revolves. Like I said, this is a very slow method. It's going to take a long time to find the desirable trades that you want, but it is possible and a lot of people do this. There are a lot of huge trading accounts that are worth a ton of money that, that do this method all the time, so it is a very tried and true method and it does just simply work. It's going to be very safe and it's going to be very slow, so if you don't have a lot of knowledge going into the trading world and you just want to make some decent profit over time and you don't really care about how long it takes, this is a good method and it is going to generate you pretty solid profit. Now I want to make it very clear that you don't have to pick from one of these methods just to focus on. Because of the length of time it takes to do both souvenir trading and the upgrade and downgrade method, it is a good idea to kind of incorporate all three of these into one general trading strategy. So you are going to want to make a big coherent trading strategy out of these three methods and then just kind of employ those whenever they are applicable. That's going to allow you to maximize the efficiency of your time. It's also going to be able to maximize your profit. Anyway guys, that's going to be it for the trading tips today. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and also like the video to help me with that YouTube algorithm. Also be sure to comment on the video to also help me get this video out there and also be sure to leave me your thoughts on this video format and how you enjoyed it. I really do hope that you guys did learn something from this video and are able to use some of these methods in your own practices. If you want some more in-depth knowledge on this, you feel free to join my Discord server and also check out my Twitter and ask some questions on those platforms. That's going to be a really good way to connect with me and also to learn more about these trading methods and how to do them correctly. Anyway guys, I hope to see you join my community. If you also want to go ahead and check out the CSGO Station community, be sure to use the link in the description below to that Discord. That's also going to give you a bunch of connections to traders as well. With that out of the way, thank you guys for checking out the video. Thanks for taking time out of your day to come spend it with me, and I wish you luck in all of your trading adventures. Be sure to like the video once again, and I will see you all next time. Peace.